Hola, hola, bienvenidos a Vida y Arte. Mi nombre es Gabriela, eh, soy artista visual y host de este espacio en donde compartimos tips, herramientas, experiencias y además de un acompañamiento en el viaje de la vida y el arte. Hoy nuestra entrevista será en inglés, el inglés es mi segundo idioma y espero que pronto este podcast pues también lo podamos tener en subtítulos en, en español para que lo puedan entender mejor. Ok, so now in English. Hello, this is uh, Gabriela and this is Life and Art. It's Vidi Arte, Life and Art. And uh, I'm a visual artist and host to this space where we share tips, tools, experiences, and also an accompaniment in the journey of life and art. And um, today I have the pleasure to expand this space to another language and culture, as this is our first English episode with Ricky Brown, an artist I met during my visit in New York during spring break, and his work was really good even though he says he's really bad. And it was it was a fun experience and it simply made me happy on my last moments during, in the city. And it caught my attention that he does this for many people and for a living, which is really awesome. Welcome, Ricky. How are you? I'm good, thank you for having me. This is so exciting. One of my first podcasts. Really? Oh my God, I'm so happy. <laughs> well, like, I'm surprised because I bet you are known a lot. Like, I was there in Washington Square Park where I met you, and there were a lot of people. So I was like, oh my God, this is a thing here in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how how much of a, of a following, but... Uh... But uh, thank you for, for reaching out to me and having me on here. Thank you. Thank you for accepting this. And Ricky, before we start, I'd like to ask this first question. So why do you think we create art? It's like... <laughs> Loaded questions up front. Good. Um, well, um, I definitely think that if you're a creative, um, it's important to do it. Uh, I think it's like a necessity and, um, it's a release definitely. And, um, you know, I think about this question a lot, you know, why does the painter paint, especially for me, because, um, I don't, most of my work is the portraits and not a lot of my work is the paintings the, They don't get a lot of exposure, so I often wonder why I do it all. But there definitely seems to be some drive, uh, some force within me that uh, needs to come out this way. I, I think that also it allows, for me personally, I don't know why others uh, create art, but uh, for me, it uh, allows my mind to rest Uh, a bit mm. when I do it and I can let all my thoughts sort of just uh, drift along uh, rather than uh, like holding on to them when I'm not uh, painting or drawing. So I think it's, it's, a, it's therapeutic for sure. Yeah. And I think there's multiple reasons, you know, we can keep going on and on, but um, <clears throat> I think it serves a lot of purposes. Yeah, what you say about like therapeutic and also you explore your inner world. So right. that's really awesome. Yeah, it sort of uh, allows you to make sense of things and make sense of your world. Uh, if it, it helps a lot if I'm like stressed or uh, I have an issue going on to go to uh, the paper or the canvas and uh, work it out there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I connect with that, that I really think that's a moment for yourself. Like, there's a, there are many ways to have self-care and those things, but, like, you having that private moment to just create, that's really something that nurtures your spirit, I think. Yeah, definitely. It, it allows you to sort of drop out uh, and forget uh, the world for a bit or, um, uh, yeah, just forget about time for a little bit also. Do you have a thing about time? Like, do you get stressed about it? <laughs> What do you mention mm, like that? I don't. I don't know if I get stressed so much. Maybe. I mean, I'm sure I do. Uh, 
I definitely do. Um, but I do think about time a lot. I used to more as a kid also, I would think, I would think and wonder how it's non-stopping, <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no stop to it. And I, I find that, uh, something, uh, fun to think about, but also just uh, very peculiar. I don't know. Maybe you enjoy it every moment. I don't know. Like you don't want it to go away. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, know. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know either. Um, I, I definitely think it's, uh, I try to be in the moment when it's happening. I think that's where uh, the infinite is. Mm -hmm. The eternal okay. here and now. <laughs> Ricky, can you tell us about who is Ricky right at this moment? Tell us about you, please. Right now I'm a podcast guest. Yeah. Gabriella's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> well, um, today I'm on my day off, doing nothing all day. I was painting earlier. I was just watching Edward Scissorhands also, oh. which I really love that movie. And um, still doing really bad portraits on the weekends. <laughs> and uh enjoying the summer is it that hot in there is it just fine or it's hot uh, it's getting to the to the hot dog days of summer as they say it's getting real hot so ricky do you live in new york where where did you grow i grew up in westchester new york oh, okay and uh in a small town called armonk And I grew up there, and then in high school, I actually moved to Colorado. <clears throat> oh, nature. I don't know, I've never been there. I just yeah, know that. Yeah. No, yeah, I moved to uh, uh, in the middle of nowhere, mountain town, um, kind of small mountain town called Steamboat Springs, Colorado. What a what a contrast! Like you go to this nature thing, and you what is it called? New York? They also call it like the concrete jungle, right? Concrete? Well, yeah, concrete jungle, right? Yeah. Well, I I grew up actually more in the suburbs, a little outside the city, so I wasn't. Uh, I, I still had some nature. Uh, I wasn't really in the city all that much, um, but it still was a contrast uh, for sure. Yeah. It, definitely with the people also were much different out there, much more relaxed, maybe a little less uptight. Um, but uh, and I enjoyed it out there a lot. My best friend was living there, so that's why I visited New York that time. And she's like, sometimes people are cold. And I don't know, I, I really had a ni nice experience in New York during that week. And sometimes I think because it's a VC series, it's just like uh, people are in their own thing. And maybe there's not like so casual to say hello or you get to meet them because maybe you see people once in your life even though they live there i don't know right yeah and i was talking more about uh the suburb that i grew up in new york is definitely a whole other thing from where i grew up yeah and i noticed because you were friendly i mean you, you uh -huh. <laughs> when i went like uh, i also grew up in a small city and i've been moving a lot Where did you grow up? Uh, I was born here in Omaha, Nebraska, but mostly in Mexico. I, I I was raised in Mexico, so I come and go. And also it was a small town. And then for my college years, I moved to a city that's... It's a city. It's way bigger than than where, where I was. But uh, it still it, it has the vibe of a small town. I don't know. Right, right. Yeah. So, Ricky, <laughs> back back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share uh, how was your approach to art? Like, what are your early memories about what art was? So my most earliest memories was when I was really young. I remember getting, like, a drawing, instruction drawing book uh, for a gift, a present. I'm not sure when. And... I remember like copying, looking at the book and then copying the drawing and looking and copying. And uh, I really loved doing that. And I, I did that for a while, basically just copying drawings. And then I remember being able to like draw a squirrel perfectly. Like I copied it exactly how it was from the 
book. And then someone saw my squirrel drawing and uh, said, that's perfect. It's like uh, unbelievable. And I remember feeling a little bit uh, like a fraud, almost like I, I remember feeling guilty because I had just copied it. You know, I really hadn't done anything like it, for some reason in this moment, it occurred to me all at once that I was just copying and doing nothing original. And, I, and so <clears throat> then I started uh, trying to make original pieces. And um, I don't know, it was just uh, I wasn't happy with how it was going. I was frustrated. I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, I basically like quit art altogether um, when I was like 12, 13. And then my next endeavor into the arts would be filmmaking. Cool. What did you do? How did you get there? I was making like small films in high school, just playing around, silly stuff. And um, basically I wanted to do film because I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Wow. <laughs> I, I had done it in high school for like a talent show and it went well. And so I thought, okay, I want to be a stand up comedian. What major do I have to, what major should I choose <clears throat> mm -hmm. for the, so it would be good for comedy? And I thought filmmaking was, was the best one. Maybe taking after uh, Seth Rogen or whatever, which who I liked at the time. And so, yeah, that's how, that's how all, all that started. When do you, did you decide to take back uh, painting? Right, so it was really the pandemic that that made it happen. Um, oh, so you weren't doing like your really bad portraits back then, like until? No, I, I, I came up with that idea in 2020, like the summer of 2020. 2020. No, yeah, it's only, it's not so long. It feels longer than it is so how can you describe your work terrible you know <laughs> the, the worst portraits ever it's just sort of you know a crummy doodle uh drawn really quick and uh f crazy like and uh they're sort of uh very simple uh doodles Oh, I love doodles. <laughs> so, but when you when I hear you that you say they are terrible, I don't feel like it has like what we would say terrible. Like you know, like it doesn't have that negative energy. Right. I I think that the, uh, the really badness is become sort of like a style mm -hmm. rather than yeah. a comment on w what the art is. Um, you know, I think it's really bad portraits is is funny and it gets people yeah. to come and it's sort of uh yeah it's a, just a funny kind of quirky thing and it's not it's obviously not bad uh, but uh it's yeah. um it's the style really bad <laughs> well I'll, now i'll share my experience because even though like um uh, with your work obviously I think your work is an experience, a really nice, really nice experience. Because I remember just like my best friend left me there. I was so excited because here, obviously, marijuana is not legal. <laughs> Juanita, Juanita, we're going to call it Juanita. Okay. And, you know, I enjoy it. And I was like, I get um, high with the view in the city. Like, I love the buildings. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was so excited when she left me there because she was going to work. And she's like, I can leave you here. And that was my last day. I was like about to leave mm. in two hours. So I was like, yeah. And and I love that park. I mean, there were a lot of artists there. And and I see you and, and I really laugh about like, they're really bad. Like, and about your membership and everything. I, I think it's a really, I don't know, it made me... I think you've noticed that people like get in this uh, happy mood, like, hey, I want a portrait and they just line up. So I do the same. So tell me about that experience, too. Yeah, you're so right, you know, and uh, I should I should really mention that first when people ask me this question to how to describe my work. It's it's definitely more of an experience and um, almost like a performance in a way. You know, I think there's like there's multiple things going on. There's me drawing the person, and then there's the crowd that forms uh, behind me to watch me draw. And 
all those things in combination and with the sign and with me d- drawing it, it, it sort of creates this uh, happening going on. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's super, super nice to see people uh, all happy and excited. And, and yeah, when, when I hand them the portrait and they start laughing, it's, it's the best. <laughs> yeah. The, I, I really enjoy it. And being, okay, guys, so if you go and see Ricky, I remember you're just getting concentrated. I don't know if that's part of your <laughs> a performance or that's something like, yes, I'm doing it. Like, yeah, no, like I... oh my God, Jack is drawing me. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, when, I, when I came up with the idea, I thought it would be really funny to while I was drawing the person to make it seem like I'm taking it real serious and like <laughs> yeah. concentrating real hard just to add to the absurdness of it all. <laughs> it's funny. I, I just love it. And, and how is it happening right now? I don't know. Like, how, what can you tell us about your experience as being an artist in New York City and doing this? Pros and cons, if you may add. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, you know, I think I've been really fortunate, uh, to get to where I am. Uh, when I, when I started, it was mostly just in Washington Square Park. And then my friend was working at this bar and she invited me to do portraits at the bar. And then the bar said, you should go to this market. Uh, and I went to the market and then I meet people at the market and they say, you should go here and there. So it's really been a, um, just sort of uh, one after the other. You meet someone, it opens this door, you meet another person, it opens that door. And um, so, you know, I, I love it because uh, I don't have a boss, you know, that's real nice, yeah. I'm my own boss. And I don't have to work all that much, which is really nice. I can just work like on the weekends um, and a few weekdays. And so, you know, my experience has been super nice, I think. <laughs> I'm very lucky. Yes, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And yeah, that's what I noticed at once, you know, that, that it was uh, that it was something that you enjoyed. And... Yeah, I definitely enjoy it. And I, I find it, I, sometimes I, I step back and see just how crazy it all is that I support myself on terrible... Little- doodles yeah doodles uh that i'm drawing in the park with sharpie and paper and so um yeah i definitely enjoy it and um i'm glad other people do and can you explain like what about the memberships and all those things how did it came up like do they people like get a lot of those no or? no no <laughs> i was like oh if i live here maybe <laughs> there, yeah there was two guys who got it and one guy was a um a father who seemed to just want to support me uh and i saw him i've seen him a few more times since he bought it but not many and then one other guy seemed to be just trying maybe to impress his girlfriend or something. <laughs> and I haven't seen him again either. But um, yeah, basically the membership and all of these are just like jokes uh, that are fun to add in and people ask about it and I can, you know, add more jokes. And yeah, it's sort of just a joke machine I got going on. <laughs> So Ricky, you mentioned that you so you're doodling, you're painting, and you did filmmaking. But like, what are other mediums you're exploring? Let's think here. Um, oh, you would like to explore? Yeah. Um, well, I've always like wanted to write a book. I think that'd be great. I mean, I did write like a little children's book way back, way back when, called a really bad book, but. Um, uh, so like more writing would be great. I just, I can't seem to be consistent enough yeah. with it uh, and stick with it long enough. Um, but that'd be great. I mean, uh, like photography, I would love to take pictures and more pictures. Uh, like I take pictures of everyone holding their portrait. I think that's part of it also. Um, and really that's it. I mean, I'm obviously super obsessed with painting at the moment. And that seems to be... <laughs> you too, really. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. 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 
Men, ja. Nej, nej. <laughs> ja. Oh, do you use what do you like to use because painting, I mean acrylic, oils. Well, uh, watercolor might be it. Yes. Yeah, yes. Acry acrylics seem to be my uh go-to. I definitely yeah. use other I use oils sometimes. Um pastels and other markers sharpies obviously but uh acrylic seems to be my main go-to uh, i like it especially because you can just it dries so quick and then you can paint over what you did and start over and so and i tend to do that a lot so uh so acrylic is my go-to is there like a, a specific theme you would like to explore or you think you're putting together you know when you are, do a series or something Um, well, lately, it seems like uh, I'm getting just more and more abstract. I'm probably at like the height of my abstraction. So it used to be more personal uh, subject matter. And now it's definitely getting way more abstract. Um, I'm also getting into more conceptual art, uh, yeah. where I'm making like... Um, With my brush, I'm making like uh, copies. So I'll do just like the, just a print of a brush and then pick it up and then just do like a print, print after print. So it's like a very clear idea here. I have some here. So like, this is like a, just a two inch brush with green. And then like you go and it gets like less paint Less and less, you see, so it's a very clear idea until it's almost, you can barely see it. So um, that's been my latest uh, fun thing that I've been okay. doing. And uh, I like it because it's uh, it has such a clear idea. It involves no thinking, you know, with art. A lot of people can get frustrated, yeah. like, what does it mean? Like, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but this is like a very simple thing you look at it and you know exactly what it is so not to uh, uh not like the other stuff i don't like anymore but this is uh new and fun and it's exciting cool so what would you um share to other artists that are struggling with that like what is there any advice you would like to give them to just free their minds or <laughs> yeah to be yeah free wow them? um Because you, you seem like you, that's something in you, like your personality. I, I, I don't know you very much, but like I can feel your chill, you know. But <laughs> I, I, can you, I don't know if you, if you were always like that or is there any advice you could give to people like calm down, chill out? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's one of the hardest things to do, definitely. And, and I still get frustrated and worked up and all that, but. I think that um, it's important to remember maybe that just anything can be painted over and like, mm -hmm. and just don't be so hard on yourself. It's, it's very hard to do. I understand uh, to not be hard on yourself. And some people feel th that they need to be hard on themselves. That's how they get the good work and all. And, you know, if, if that works for you, then good. Um, but, I think just keep keep doing keep going and uh, try to find mainly just try to find like what's fun and what what you get a kick out of and uh, what's interesting to you and uh, number one probably would be just to like definitely expose yourself to a lot of art and look and see what uh, all I think you know George Kondo. Does he do doodles? No, um... George, let me Google it. <laughs> yeah, go, do a quick Google. He did the he did the cover art for Kanye's uh, Dark Twisted Fantasy that got banned, uh, and that's why it's, like, oh. pixelated and uh, still alive, like a, a very current artist. Q but, uh, looks like Cubism. Some of it, like collage. Oh, yes, I, I didn't know his work, but a short documentary, what he likes to yeah. do, and yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, no, he's awesome, and uh, his advice was like, uh, find, go look at all the great works of art and see what they have in common 
and uh, try to study. Yeah, I think just exposing yourself to a lot of art will get you inspired enough to go and and I think uh, also like uh, don't concern yourself with being all that original. Like, if you want to make a painting that, like, if you want to make a, a Picasso style painting, then just do that. You know, it's fun, and uh, you don't have to stress yourself about making uh, something so new. Yeah, I have a theory. It's a personal theory that it's um, like. When we like some pieces, is because we connect with that energy. Like we can click, uh, like uh, the energy the artist was making that piece. Right. And because I don't know if you heard about Dali, that he was obsessed with this painting. Ah, oh, he's also a famous artist. But the painting is two farmers that are looking at the ground, and they seem like they're looking at like an empty harvest, mm-hmm. and it, it's, it's like, like um. It's not a nest. Where do you, like, I don't have that word in my head right now. It's where you put fruit, but it's... Like a basket? Basket. Oh, my God. Yeah. (laughs) That one. Okay. So he was really obsessed about that one because he was like, I'm pretty sure it's um, a baby that was buried there. Like, it's a ton. Like, it's not just the fruits. And he was really obsessed about it. So after they did x-ray, they figured out that yes, that the painter painted on it. He was right. I mean, he didn't know that. And I'm like, wow, you know? Because also he connected it with the story that he he lost a brother. So he was, that's why he connected like with the theme, you know, like death baby or something like that. That's incredible. That's that's why my theory sometimes about like why we like some pieces and some other people don't, and yeah. Yeah, wow, that's so interesting. He he knew he had a feeling. Yeah, yeah it definitely seems to have a lot to do with like a feeling, you know. It, yeah, it's sort of an indescribable, uh, just uh, feeling that you have towards uh, this or that. So you you mentioned uh, George. Is there any other, like, artist or any particular... What's your favorite piece of art? Like, it could be yours, of course. (laughs) (laughs) But what's your favorite artwork ever? Oh, wow. I don't know. Uh, Right now, you know, we live in the moment. Right now? (laughs) Well, uh, I really like um, Philip Guston. You know Philip Guston? Philip Guston. Well, right now, actually, um, I really like uh, Cy Twombly. Oh. He did, he did those, like, loop-de-loops, constant loop-de-loops. Yeah. I really like those. Um, Gorky. I don't know if you've heard of Gorky. No, or Shiloh you Gorky. send me the words, you know. He's also an abstract <laughs> expressionist. Um, Basquiat. I'm Basquiat. sure you're familiar. Yeah. Um... I, uh, when I first started getting into art, I was really into like realism actually. Uh, I don't know why, but it was just sort of, I didn't know what to paint. So I thought, okay, I'll paint, uh, certain things around the house or certain personal objects. And, uh, I wanted to get it real realistic. And so I first started, um, I was first inspired by, uh, Andrew Wyeth. I don't know if you're familiar. Andrew. And so there's a painting of his uh, that's called Christina's World, and it's a uh, it's a very famous American painting of a a woman in a field who's sort of yearning for a house in the distance. Oh yeah. So that was one of my uh, early famous or not uh, early paintings that I really liked and. Um, and I started listening to interviews of him, and I really liked what he was saying. You know, he was very into that the art has to be, has to come from within you, from deep within you. You have to like reach down inside and yank something out that's within you and make it very meaningful, to, very personal. And I like that too. And I like, uh, sort of similar to, I have a Ren- Renoir uh, book here, and he talks about how, like, the only thing that, that makes uh, any artwork, uh, uh, the make that, that makes it great is uh, the qualities that, of the artist. It's the artist that, 
And I think that's very true. You know, people are are very, I, I think, more interested in the artist than the art itself uh, yeah. in many cases. So what do you do to keep nurturing that energy? I mean, what do you, what do you like to do so you can keep like building these artists within you? What, what, how do you say uh, Juanito? Juanita. <laughs> Juanita. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes. a, lo a, a, a lot of this daily um, <laughs> other than that um, and all that um, maybe you know I don't know um, I really don't know just definitely trying new things like uh, I tried to just like bring novelty always into the work and you know you'll see a lot of uh artists on Instagram and a lot of them tend to just make the same paintings over and over and over again and yeah. um, you know that's fine there's a lot of uh, good ones out there um, but uh, for me it's more interesting to try to find new ideas new new subject matters new way to do things uh, so yeah that's really nice evolving like yeah like that's something that's for a fact in this world like everything's moving everything's evolving right so. no th this is it and uh to to get in line with the flow i think is a nice uh muse if you will or you know that's the other thing to like the muse is the idea right you like go and you try to just be uh, to investigate the muse or just to What did uh, Hemingway said? He said, I go in front of the paper and bleed, you know, so that's uh, quite nice. That's um, <laughs> Have you done grounding? Grounding? So tell so, me. So like you, you just stand barefoot on the grass or nature, just like being there, you know, like. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, that's, that's always a nice feeling. If I can find a patch of grass here. Obviously, if you're not allergic, because a lot of people are allergic. Oh, to yeah. This. No, I'm not. But, yeah, that's that's one of the great feelings in life is the grass between your feet. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think um, I've been doing it lately because the weather is nicer. And besides Juanita, when I ha have the chance, I just connect to the same feeling without it when I do grounding. Right. So I just, just I'm just, just sharing if you if you can do that like cool. to see what's happening and just like take your stuff your paintings and you can get like um, the mat and just having your feet on it but yeah yeah cool yeah maybe maybe something different like it's nice to have our space at home our studio but also like what's happening if we go elsewhere yeah. you know yeah definitely that's great awesome I will try that. Yeah. Okay, so we're moving to about life. So okay. What are you learning right now? What am I learning? Well, let's see here. I'm learning that life doesn't need to be taken so seriously. <laughs> <laughs> And that um, it's very easy to get caught up in uh, the drama of life, the melodrama that is uh, life. So... Um, I'm learning that, uh, I really like being in New York and I like, uh, this little life that I got going here and that I think I want to stay a bit longer. Oh, you have plans of moving? No, I, I feel like I'm always sort of, um, like on the fence because I, I do love to be like surrounded by nature and, yeah. uh, immersed in that type of place, but I do love the city and it offers me to do the portraits and stuff and so i'm always sort of torn this way and also I, like i've lived here for a year and constantly what i'm doing is i live a place for a year or so and then i move to another place and then i move and move and move so like now that i'm here for a year i feel like I, this uh, natural mm -hmm. urge to move is coming up uh, again again but i i think that I ought to stay here for a bit longer 
Um, and honestly, I think it's the only place for me <laughs> in a way, I, you know, I don't think I can do a, a regular job or any other job that requires me to clock in or whatever. Um, and the city allows me to do, I definitely want to take this on the, on the road and try it at, at a few different cities would be great. Maybe during yeah. the winter, I'll go down to New Orleans or Nashville or something. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Well so it would be like the yeah the portraits what, what i'm getting back a little bit to the artwork but like where do you think it's interesting from faces or people people well people are the most interesting i think it's just what i'm so fascinated with uh, are people uh, they're just so you know interesting to watch and to get to know and to study and observe it's it's fascinating uh, especially when you're drawing someone <laughs> yeah you, you can know right away if they're comfortable with it or if they're uncomfortable and <laughs> yeah. a lot of people are uncomfortable <laughs> with getting drawn and they they realize that <laughs> as soon as I start drawing them and maybe they didn't know that about themselves before Uh, because it's funny to go get a portrait and then be uncomfortable with getting a portrait. Uh, so, you know. Even though it's really fast, you know? Yeah, Even though well, it's really fast. <laughs> thank God yeah, for I them that it's really fast. Yeah, so anyway. It's like when, when they sing in your birthday and you're like, Yeah, <laughs> like right. just staring at them right. and you're like exactly. do I see it? do I keep smiling do I look at the candles what do I do with my hands yeah <laughs> yeah um, I think that all of that has been a, a very a point of fascination for me awkwardness I find really interesting uh with a like sing someone singing you happy birthday so I kind of like um get off on awkwardness and uh find myself uh, very content within it so sometimes yeah cool i'm glad you're experiencing that and another question about life that it says um name something for which you cannot leave this world without experiencing or living like you're like i cannot die until i do this so the question is like what i what haven't i done already that i yeah you, yeah you haven't Well, I want to try this drug, uh, DMT. Have you heard of? I've tried it. You tried it? Sapito, yeah. I oh, I, I know it very well. Uh, yeah. Five I MEO that. DMT from the Bufo Alvarius. Bufo Alvarius, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I wish you the best to the experience. It's a nice experience. Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> so, okay. For me, the purpose is like, yes, I want to improve. Like, I want to be, um, we all are spiritual, but I want to be a, as lighter as possible, getting to work things that stop my mind or whatever. So for DMT in Ayahuasca, for me, it was really nice. I was laughing and I felt guilty at some point because people were crying. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, like you get to do this with other people. Mm -hmm. and, you, and but it was really nice and at some point I was with another girl next to me and we all came along I just remember that at some point I was like far from my friend my I just met her that day mm -hmm. <laughs> and and we were talking and at some points it, it was like uh when we were like uh, connecting with like a tunnel wow. and it was like I have a loud voice naturally But I remember that I was like this, and I was like, please get in your coat because it feels like someone's hugging you. And I felt like I was in my mom's womb again. Yeah. You know, like I felt like this loving, nurturing thing. And I've been thankful, but I think that's like the, what really feeling thankful is, you know, in a state of grace. And I was having this connection about the theme of reincarnation. So you ask, did I meet my mom or like I had those things in my head and it's not like I hear something, but like when you have intuition and you're like, it's not words, it's just like information comes in a feeling right. and it came like that for me. I don't know if it's true and I don't care to prove it, right. but it's like, oh, 
So I already had my mom and my dad in another life. We were siblings, so it's like so beautiful that we get to connect again. <laughs> I really love those things. Yeah. And and when it was the buffo, it was a year ago during the summer I went to Mexico. You know, you have to be wise in those things because mm, you can open things you're not ready to or something. I think, yeah, it's a calling, you know. So I went and I was like, well, I just did ayahuasca, but I don't know about, like, I feel like I'm in, in peace with my decision to do bufo. So it lasted like 15 minutes and it was really fast. Like, it's not like with ayahuasca, remember, I was like, is it here yet? Like, right. I had to take double, like, it depends in everybody. Like, she told me, like, bufo is really clear like yeah. it's gonna happen in 15 seconds after you smoke it so she told me i have to do it like it's not like wait like you cannot remember how but we practice a little bit so it was like you hold them and then i went back and it was quick just like, one hit I, you took one hit yeah just just one hit she measured it i don't know how much it, but she told me like how much it was and she, that's the dose is for everybody i think yeah and I was okay. And yeah, she also did um, music therapy. Mm. So she was singing and she does this like, oh, I like see. singing. Imagine that, like, I was getting like, whoa, like in a tunnel. I didn't see anything, but I felt something and I really, I connected again. Right. And, and it was like, oh my God, we are one. Yeah. Like, you know, like at the end, I was like, like that information was like, the okay. fuck? <laughs> that's true like that's true and yeah. well i'm saying a lot of things but but it was a nice experience and i hope you you where wherever you decide you have a great experience yeah i hope so too i also want to try the other dmt the synthetic no so there's that five meo dmt and then there's another uh DMT that's a very different way more visual experience um, do they do it in New York I bet they do a lot of things I don't know Have you yeah it? I don't know so I, I've been trying for the bufo I've been trying to there's the, I've met someone who works for someone who does it and I've been trying to they basically travel all around and so they're traveling to New York City in August to do for a few people and then they're going to go to the next city so i'm going to try to catch that <laughs> uh, wave yeah. yeah so ricky do you have anything you would like to share about art or an advice like well uh thank you for having me you know this was a very this was a fun conversation with you and a, a nice conversation and um what else can I say? Uh, yeah, th that's it. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Ricky. I really appreciate your time and that final we align to have an interview. Yes, and yes, and, and thank you for being patient with me. Uh, <laughs> no, no, thank you. I mean, everything's perfect because uh, luckily I also do whatever I want with my time. So it's okay. <laughs> very nice. Yes, good. So, could you share like your information? Where can they find you? And also, I don't know if you want to share if you have another like um, plan ahead. I don't know. Yeah. So I mean, I'm really trying to work on a really bad, getting a really bad store going, a new a new store, and it's going to be called the Vandalize Here, and the store is basically white walls, white floor with a table with paint and markers and you can come and paint on the walls draw on the walls do whatever maybe a bar and um, live music all this so i'm really trying to start that and that'll be the next phase of my career hopefully that's so exciting i can't wait to go there and draw <laughs> yes me too and so if anyone out there uh has experience with opening a store and wants to help me out please reach out to me my instagram is really underscore bad underscore portraits and that's it thank you so much ricky for sharing that and now i'll tell you where they can find these podcasts so 
Thank you for all listeners that are listening in English. So this is the first time ever English interview and podcast with Ricky. And this podcast will be in Spotify, YouTube, and also other apps you can hear it. So I'll, I'll put the link. And thank you so much, Ricky. And I hope whenever you want to come and share something, this is your space too so that's thank awesome you. thank you so much gabriella and uh we'll be in touch